blood of Jesus right now. All bitterness and hatred and inconveniences in Jesus' name. You are not going to hinder what God has been trying to get out right now in Jesus' name. You're, you're done. Get out of my house. I'm tired of you. In Jesus' name. Pray for healing and wholeness. Lord Jesus, the none go with us. We will follow. Even though we're dry sticks, we will still praise you. We love you, Lord. You said you'll be with us till the end of the age. Father, may we be with you till you come and get us. In Jesus' name. Help us, oh God. Amen. It's time to go. Do you love? Romans 5 5. The love of God has been shed abroad upon our hearts. A lot of scriptures. Whose side are you on? Who's on the Lord's side? This hope, the hope of glory, will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son that whoever who believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Um, the Lord put on my heart to talk about his love. And I said, oh God, I can't get that close. I have no idea what to do. I can't. Pastor Carter Collin said it's like going up to an iceberg that sunk the Titanic, scraping it with your finger, and maybe getting the little bit under your fingernail. And that perhaps may get started on the love of God. Philippians 2. I'm going to spend time Philippians 2. Father, whatever you want to speak to your people, I just pray you speak. Um, I, I'm here, showing up. I thank you that I get a chance to show up. Make this your own attitude. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. Uh, verse 5. Who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. A lot of people use this passage to say, Jesus undid his divinity. No. Because he knew the, divinity, the divine was in him. How? Because Satan tempted him, saying, take these stones and make them bread. He didn't say, I can't. He said, I won't. Satan took him to the mountain and said, I'll give all of this to you. Worship me. He didn't say, I can't. He said, I won't. He said, throw yourself off. He didn't say, I can't. He said, I won't. Guys, this is love. Verse 7. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the, uh, the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. God himself 
took on wretched flesh. Uh, Roy Hessian in his book, Calvary Road, he says this, that the, the way is narrow, the way to life, is, um, uh, he says, sometimes we slip off, and it's like this, one little step aside and we are off the path of in darkness. It is always because of two things, of a failure in obedience somewhere, or failure to be weak enough to let God do all. It's time to go. It's time to go. Yes, it's time to go. I don't want to use your name out, but I was told very specifically, it's time to go. If the love of God has been shed and brought upon your heart, why are you still here? Why are you still sitting where you are? Why are you still in complacency? Jesus said, I love so much, I'm going to leave my place. I'm going to come and take on human form. Give myself for the uttermost. I'm going to go. Here am I, send me. He loved. God loved. I do what I see my father do. Jesus willingly relinquished his rights to divinity. He didn't relinquish divinity. He relinquished his claim to it. He relinquished his right to it. He said, I am going to be actively saying no. If you pass, if you don't actively do the right thing, you will passively do the wrong thing. He actively refused. He said, no, I will not. We say, no, I will not to the wrong things. And we don't say, yes, I will to the right things. Gethsemane, he actively refused to refuse the cup. He took the cup. He chose against what he wanted. He said, not my will. I will drink this cup because you will so that others may live. Paul says like this. For me, verse uh, Roman up. Uh, Sorry, Philippians 121. For me, living is Christ and dying is gain. Now, that dying is not necessarily a martyrdom. It could be. Here's your dying. This is how Jesus died. Not, get, not Calvary. That was the outflow of Gethsemane. This was, do we live in Gethsemane? That's where love is. We say, Lord, I don't want to do this. But I do this because I love you. Folks, it wasn't the cross. Yes, the cross, highly important. Absolutely, it's a bedrock of our faith. Even more still, it's the claim to your own soul. I want to be comfortable. I want to be happy. I want to be safe. I want to be... Fill in the blank. I want to have a good house, good job, nice friends. I want my, my wife. I want my kids. I want my mom. I want my brother. I'm speaking for myself. I want those relationships. I had a conversation with a family member. Look, if you want a relationship with us, stop talking to us about your faith. I said, I don't want a relationship with you. I want you to go to Jesus first. Then I can have a relationship with him through you. Not the other way around. Let's not put the cart before the horse. Who's going to go? That's what the love of God requires. We say, you know what? I love you, Lord. I don't care what happens to me. I don't care what I have or don't have. 
It's not about me. That dying is the very thing you want to hang on to. The thing that you, you're feeling this tearing, this pulling, this aching. Let's face it, you're hanging on to something. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now, but I know who is speaking. I know who is using this frail, foolish looking individual for the sake that somebody needs to hear this message. Somebody needs to hear stink. I've been on my butt, I've been wasting time, and I need to get up and just go. That is what got me to Christ in the first place. I was with someone in sexual sin right after the act. And she said, you just need to get up and go to church. Go to Jesus. He'll take care of you. You just need to do it. I was like, what? Okay. Done. My history was over of my old life. And here I am, 18 years later. Because somebody said, get up, go. Huh? Okay. What's keeping you back? What is keeping you back? Why are you here? Why are you where you are? Why? Just do it. Just go. You love God so much. Prove it. Just do it. Throw it all out there upon the Lord. You'll never look back. You will never be disappointed. You will never regret it. And you will. You cannot, I've heard a phrase, you cannot outgive God. I want to suggest he doesn't care about money. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. All the pain, all the frustration, give it to him. Give him your fear. God, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my wife, lose my kids, lose, lose this. Fine, give it to him. Go. Just go. Go in that direction. Just do it. Stop waiting. Stop. It, it ain't going to come. The right opportunity will never come. Be bold. Take that direction that's never been done. And do it. Take a chance. Fail. Take a chance. Fail. Do it. Go ahead and fail. Fall into the arms of Jesus. That's where you'll fall. You will always fall into his net. You will always fall into his hands. You will always fall forward. You will always fall into grace. Why? Because my Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, go ahead and fall into him. Do it. Say, Lord, I've sought you. I've done all the planning I know to do. Now what? Take a flying leap. Prophet Bob Jones, Kansas City prophet. He shared this with Mahesh Havda. In the 70s, they had a pre-service and it was worship time. He just said, macaroni and cheese. And uh, pastor comes out and says, sounds like Brother Jones hungry. And uh, people started laughing. And there was a lady who brought her 10 children with their families, took out half the church and just walked right out. He felt horrible. Bob felt horrible. He's with the Lord now. And he said, Lord, do I stand up past tracks on the corner or what? And the Lord told him, you learn from your persecution and tribulation and trial and struggle. You don't learn from your blessings. You don't learn anything. You learn for eternity. You were getting ready to rule and reign with him. What do you got to lose here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, he was told later that there's a lady that had 11 children, 10 of which were pastors or married to pastors, and God said, I'm taking you home. And she said, I'm gonna go kick him and scream until you tell me you're gonna save my last boy. He was a truck driver. And she said, Lord, I need a word and you're gonna save my son. I hear this is prophet from Kansas City. Give me a word from this guy that only I know that you're gonna save my boy. Mm -hmm. She goes to this worship and uh, he blurts, Bob blurts out macaroni and cheese. And uh, he was a truck driver. You know what he drove? 
macaroni and cheese. She wasn't angry at Brother Bob. She was angry at the pastor and the leaders who laughed at the Holy Spirit. Take a chance. I got kicked out of a church in Israel because the Lord told me three times, give him this word. God wants to give you faith. I was like, okay, Lord, I need to know this is you. Last time, confirm it and I'll go. That you want to give me, that you want me to give this word. Pastor goes up, God wants to give you something. Woo! I went up to the front. They pulled me out so quick, like David Wilkerson in that courthouse. They thought I was an anti-missionary. They said, you need to leave. And I said, but here's the word. No, that's a word for you. Really, I, I did have a personal word, and that wasn't it. Uh, and that's when God set motion. Worship begins at home. Starts here, it starts here. That's where the love of God is. Take a chance. If that never happened, we would, we would not be here today. Eighth of the Tank would have never gotten published. Leanne would have never had the ministry she had. I would have never gone to Ohio a second time. Um, okay, it's in print. One of the kids said for me to show it. Okay, fine. In your living for Christ, are you living... Verse 27, uh, Philippians 127. Just one thing, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. Then whether I come and see you or am absent, I will hear about you, that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, working side by side for the faith that comes from the gospel. I'm not being frightened in any way by your opponents. You're going to have opponents. You know what? Rejoice, because you know you're going in the right direction. This is a sign of destruction for them. Why? Because you're standing as a witness for faith. You guys understand that when you take a step in faith for the love of God, you are taking, you are being a living testimony saying, I am a testimony of God's faithfulness. And it's going to look totally stupid. You know what? Good. Somebody's got to go first. When you do that, you are standing as a single witness as a rebuke to them. Because he says this, for it has been given, verse 29, to you on Christ's behalf, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Having the same struggle that you saw I had, Paul, and now here that I have. You guys understand that? Your calling as a Christian is, suffer, is suffering for his sake. Why? So that his name may be proclaimed. Sure, you will get financial blessings, perhaps. It's for his management. You will get security physically, but it's for his sake, not yours. We have brothers and sisters dying left and right for Christ. Why? Because the love of God has been shed, abro shed abroad upon their hearts. They love, so they have to give. Do you love? Do you love enough to go? Do you love enough? If, if you're going, is God calling you to stay? Are you comfortable yet? Or is God saying, get uncomfortable? Go ahead and disregard the offense that's happened to you. Go ahead and say, you know what? It doesn't matter even if they did wrong. I'll just bless them. It doesn't matter what the Lord decides to do on your behalf is relevant. <clears throat> Let the love of God be shed abroad upon your heart. Get uncomfortable for Jesus. Go. It's time to go. The love of God in Corinthians compels, constrains us, therefore we persuade men. I want to suggest to you, Leanne loved God so much, she had to go. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to say. She went. It's your turn. It's time to go. It may be your life. It may be your life. Reputation. Your job. Your friends. Your family. What's it going to cost you? 
how much do you love? I cannot preach what I don't practice. We feel the Lord's calling us to go back to Ohio for traveling. This is pretty scary. We're all going to go. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. We can't stay. We're not moving. But any trip is very unnerving. I don't have anything else other than what I feel the Lord has given me. Do you have anything to share, Esther? Yes, I would um, just like to point out the Bible verse that you were talking about. Um, you said perhaps, you know, if you feel God calling, we're like, perhaps we're going to lose this relationship and that relationship. What Jesus says in Matthew 10 37, the person who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The person who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone finding his life will lose it, and anyone losing his life because of me will find it. I, uh, I never signed up for losing my first wife. I never signed up for that. So soon, and the kid's so young. My kids don't always, I never signed up for the challenges that I'm having now with the children. I'm having to start totally over. Uh, and uh, and uh, I feel like I'm having to redo correction, discipline. I don't know how to raise my kids anymore, and it's totally new. I don't know how to be a husband. Oh, I was a good husband to Leanne, maybe, you know, sorry to brag. You know, Leanne told me that, that's the only thing. Leanne told me that, she said, you're a good husband to me. Now I'm like, oh God, I don't know how to be a husband. I don't. I don't know how to be a father. I don't know how to... I never signed up for it. And I said, Lord Jesus, I have decided to follow you. Though none go with me. I don't care if anybody follows me. I know I've been touched. The love of God has been poured into me. I may not be here tomorrow. But I pray... Every one of you go because you love so much. The hallmark of a Christian is you go. And you don't stay. You go because the love of God is more important than the love of men. Paul even said in Philippians, I have earnestly desired to see you with Christ's affection, not human affection. Your relationship with Christ and all other relationships should flow from that. Because you love Jesus, your father, mother, brother, sister, sons, daughters should come from your relationship with Jesus. If they don't love you because of your love for Jesus, you can only do so much. That's all I have. Father, your love is great. Your mercy is great. You are more ready to give than we are to receive. Father, we can do nothing without you. Help us to abide. Jesus, we love you. We trust you. Bless everybody here. In Jesus' name, amen.